Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. It's Alan, the Clonmore Collector Geek, and this is part five? Or is it part four? Part four or five? <laughs> Something like that. Um, kind of getting tired, <laughs> even though I just, just starting. Um, but uh, yeah, this is um, going to be a great episode. So uh, yeah, I think this is part four. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, part four. Part four. Wow. Even the first few episodes were fairly long. So um, if you haven't checked them out, check them out because they're, <laughs> I show some crazy books. Um, but this one will be also more crazy books, uh, just awesome books. Um, and I'm going to show, like, I'll show you, like, this is the big stack that I'm doing, like that many books. Um, I'm going to put these ones aside. Some of them are kind of loose. So I'll show you those ones first. Oh, interesting. Okay, some of these will be interesting. Some of these are giveaways that I won. Um, and some of them are just random things. So we'll see what's inside. Okay, so this one, use code everyone wins at Mega McTees by March 17th. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> Shoot. I mean, these were sitting at Stackery. But, um, oh, I, I could have won an extra prize, but uh, these were sitting at Stackery, so I didn't get to win the second prize. But basically, this was a prize that I won uh, through my friend Falco, <laughs> uh, where I got all these uh, anime, anime and monthly mega magazines. So this is one piece. Um, and it's just like, uh, you know, these kind of anime related books yeah it's kind of yeah, interesting so I, I don't necessarily collect these kind of things but hey why not and so I you know he gave me a couple of these codes but uh, I missed the date so I won't be able to do it but he gave me a bunch of these books this was all through this win um so this is Animeric anime and monthly have a preview magazine so those are kind of cool I'll have to bag and board those and then next uh, this is a really great comic I actually almost bought this again almost bought this twice um, because my um, when I was visiting my family um, the comic shop that I go to that sells back issues they had this book and I was like oh maybe they haven't increased the price because this book has become crazy hot recently um, so I was, you know, I went over to the guy and said, Hey, how much is this book? And he wanted $175 for it. <laughs> I was like, Oh man, good thing I bought it earlier. I bought it, uh, because I like the movie that this shows. This is Unknown Worlds of Science Fiction, number one. And the movie that is showing is Day of the Triffids. I love that movie. I thought it was a great movie. Um, I guess they're going to be doing a series, a TV series called Strange, like Unknown Worlds of Science Fiction. Uh, and this book became hot because of that. So I, I, I figured, hey, why not pick it up? So, um, uh, but I picked that, I think I paid 30 or $40 for it. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my local comic shop guy, I guess the, the price has gone up a lot since. But that, I, I was lucky I picked it up when I did. Um, Okay, this next one um, is was recommended. I forgot who recommended. I think it was Dope Comics. I want to give. I always want to give credit and shout outs to other comic channels when they inspire me to buy comics, um, because you know I want to kind of build the community. So you'll notice in these videos, I'll mention, oh, I got this because of such and such channel and so forth, and. I really do want to kind of support the community. If I can send more views to them and support them, and then they'll create more videos uh, to, um, you know, show me other cool comics that I might want to buy, <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. So, uh, yeah, I just um, I want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, so this is, I think this is dope comics that mentioned this one. Okay, let me just take it out. And the series that he mentioned, I believe it was Dope Comics, I want to give him the credit, um, was a series called Bigfoot. And the reason I picked this up is it features these really great uh, art 
it's a bit sexy inside you know it's not meant for kids <laughs> um but um it's done by richard corbin who i really like i really like his artwork I, i'm not sure if the interior art is by him i think it is um but uh this is a bigfoot number three and i picked up a like it, i was able to find a lot Normally, each book goes for like sixty to a hundred dollars. I was able to buy a lot that had the whole series for uh, sixty bucks, so I was quite happy. So, and then we got number four, and number two, and number one. This is a classic. <laughs> All these are like uh, Richard Corbin covers. Uh, but this is like the classic, you know, photo homage of uh, Bigfoot where he's kind of walking into the woods. So that, I really, I was quite excited to get that set. And I know what this one is. It's another, I believe this is a kind of a cool good girl art comic. This is Terror on the Dark Continent. I believe this is the first appearance of a, t a Tempest Storm or some one character like that. Um, so um, Terror on the Dark Continent number one from 1974. It's a really rare book. Um, really hard to find this book. <laughs> like really, really hard to find. I think. Uh, I've only seen it once and I picked it up. <laughs> so that's how hard it is to find. Um, so if you ever see that book, pick it up. It's a pretty major key. Uh, again, it's these good girl art keys. So uh, that was Terra of the Dark on the Dark Continent. Okay, one second. Okay, this is a my comic shop order. Okay, well, a whole bunch of books. <laughs> okay, so I actually realized that I had this book afterwards. For some reason, I don't know why, but my books got mixed up. And I couldn't find my copy of these two books that I'm going to show. This is um, Terror 136. I actually have two copies of this now. Um, and that's the a, B cover, and then the, this is the A cover. And I have both of these, and uh, now I have two of them. Because I couldn't find them, and for some reason they weren't in my t um, tarot long box, and I was really like, "Oh, where am I? Where's 136?" <laughs> I couldn't find it, so um, now I have two copies. I managed to get that from uh, my comic shop, and the reason often I send my comic shop orders to a stackery, which is the place that consolidates the comics for me or consolidates all my orders and then ships them off to Canada is due to the fact that those books have some nudity in them and they will not send it across borders. But Stackery will, <laughs> so that's why I use them. Um, this is just a really fun, uh, this next one is just a really fun uh, Infinity cover. I've been collecting Infinity covers. I actually did a search on my comic shop for Infinity covers, and this is a Golden Age one uh, from 1947, and it's uh, Frisky Fables, uh, number three. And uh, you can see that the turkey is reading the, you know, it's like an infinity cover there. You can see he's reading, it's always them reading a book and then the book, you know, shows the cover of the comic that they're in and then so forth. That's the infinity part. So I just loved the infinity covers and this one wasn't that expensive. So picked it up. <laughs> and then we got, this is a classic cover. Uh, this was on my watch list and once it, once it popped up on my watch list, I immediately bought it. So this is Betty and Veronica, number 48. And it's just a cla classic uh, good girl art cover. Um, so Miss Grundy, how do you think the girls are progressing? Oh, by leaps and bounds. So, you know, kind of cute humor. But a uh, very um, classic good girl art cover. So uh, this is Betty and Veronica, 48. I forget when that's from. 
probably early 50s, still golden, barely golden age, like probably 55, based on the fact that it has the marble back, uh, uh, the comic code authority stamp on it. But it's in that era. Okay, uh, next one is uh, Showgirls number two. And I'm trying to get the complete run of Showgirls. Like I have Showgirls number one and two <laughs> now. Um, so this is Showgirls number two. And these these featured the writing of uh, uh, Stan Lee and the artwork of Dan DiCarlo. Um, I don't think this is a Dan DiCarlo, though. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Usually he signs his covers. But um, it has a lot of really great good girl art. Okay. And um, this one's kind of funny. Um, this is um, the third race, I believe, for Superman and the Flash. Uh, I think it's the third. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure it's the third race. This is Superman uh, number 463. And it is like an homage to the original um, uh, cover. But instead, it has like a couple differences. Like you know, uh, I forget what character was here before, but this is um, Mixel Quixel Pixel dude, <laughs> that guy, and you got Power Girl there, and it's like you know, I just like these Flash races. I've been trying to pick up the all of the different Flash races, so that's that one. And then we got um, Last Resort. Um, so yeah, so just another one of these kind of cool covers. Uh, I forgot who did the artwork for this one, but this is like the um, the A cover, and uh, this artist did all the. I, I like this artist stuff. I just I forgot the name of the artist. I'm trying to remember their name, but um, just really great covers for this series. I bought the whole set and I showed it in the previous video. So go watch part three, um, and you can see me showing more the last resorts. So I got the whole set now. Um, this next one is requiring a little bit of cutting. Nope. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is a nice book. Okay. This is, this is one of the ones that I needed to complete a run. Um, so... In the 50s, um, L.B. Cole bought his own publishing company, and it was called Star Comics. And what he would do is he would reprint a lot of the Golden Age books like Jojo or um, Rula and um, Zoot, and he would put his own covers on them. And he would give them these kind of horror-like covers. And he basically had a series called um, Terrors of the Jungle, um, and Jungle Thrills was one of these series. And basically, the issue numbers kept on changing, like, you know, uh, where the, uh, the title kept on changing and the issue number would continue. So this is Jungle Thrills number 16, which was the last one that I needed to complete this kind of jungly uh, series of uh, comics. Um, so yeah, uh, just a really great L.B. Cole cover. And as I said, there would be reprints inside of... Um, artwork uh, of, of stories from either you know some fox publication but just fun stuff inside as well uh so yeah so that's jungle uh jungle thrills number 16 and that is the only one of that of that series that was actually titled jungle thrills number 16 uh jungle uh jungle thrills the others are terrors of the jungle and um horrors of the jungle i believe Okay, as I almost drop all the books on <laughs> sec here, this tape is sticking to me and I, I can't get, get it off. And, okay, there, get away. Okay, <laughs> this is like sticking to me and like I was like, my hand was like incapacitated by it. Okay, all right, so now we're getting into some more cool comics. This is a really great one. This is uh, The Wolfman, number one. And um, this one you actually have to be a little bit careful about because there's a first print and there's a second print. This is the first print. And the way you can tell the first print 
is the first print is August. It'll say August up here. If it's a second print, it'll say October, I believe. So you look for that. And I this is the first appearance of the Wolfman in comics. So really great. I like these universal monsters. Actually, I showed a universal monster in the very first part of this uh, video, like of this video series. So you have to check that out. Um, but I love universal monsters. I was a big horror buff when I was when I was a kid. I actually was scared of horror movies when I was really young. But I found that the universal monster movies were not scary. I thought they were just interesting. Um, so I could watch those. And then that kind of led to my love of horror movies in general uh, later on. But um, yeah, first wolf, Wolfman. Pretty exciting. It's not in the best of shape. It's like, it's from 1963, but you know, not in the best of shape, but it's, you know, it's still kind of a cool book. And I'm not sure why, but I have these free, <laughs> these empty, uh, empty things that they put in, I guess, just as protectors. Interesting. Okay. Next. Another My Comic Shop order. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> really great books. Oh, wow. Okay. Really, really great books. Okay. So I'll, I'll show you these ones. Uh, the first one is uh, Fighting Yank number 13. And I actually posted this up on my Instagram. I just thought this was such a great cover. So you got, uh, this is typical war propaganda cover. You got uh, Fighting Yank, obviously. And you got all these little kids that are all tied up. You can see them all in bondage. And you got these evil Japanese soldiers and they're shooting at the fighting yank. And uh, they're about to put snakes in this little uh, playpen with the kids, you know, to kill the kids. They're so evil Japanese, right? <laughs> so, um, and you even have the little buy war bonds stamp. So they, they really would try their best to demonize the, the, the enemy. These were, this is an Alex Schomburg cover as well. And Alex Schomburg, as I said, he, he's like one of these really great artists for the golden age, uh, where he um, will put in so many cool little details. So as I said, you know, you know, he would, he, you can see all the little kids in their bondage and stuff. And you can even see like, uh, you know, some, you know, the, the flag, the Japanese rising sun flag in the background and just so many just really great details just happening there. Really, I just really like this cover um, and I got it for a reasonable price. It's actually a pretty pricey book, um, but it is low grade because it is missing that piece there. But that's Fighting Yank number 13. And this book, I, I was actually shocked how cheap this book is. Um, I paid like two bucks for it. It's a Basil Wolventine cover. It's called Plop. And this is Plop number one. Uh, I, I collect a little bit of Basil Wolventine stuff. And I thought this was just an interesting one. I have other issues from this series. I just never had number one. So I figured, hey, why not pick up number one? And it was like $2 or something. Like a dollar or two. It was really cheap. Um, so I picked it up. Um, it was, it's not high grade or anything. But it doesn't, actually it doesn't look that bad. Um, but yeah, plop number, number one. And this next one is a reprint of a book that I just actually, as I'm recording this video, yesterday, I won the auction for the actual thing that this is reprinting. This is, um, Mr. Monster's Weird Tales of the Future. So Weird Tales of the Future, uh, features this same cover. And this is just like the homage to uh, Basil Wolverton. It's actually, it is a Basil Wolverton with a little bit of a modern twist to it, I think. Um, but it's a very classic cover. So I, I, I figured, hey, I'll, I, I, I didn't think I'd ever be able to get this book, <laughs> the real one. So I figured I, I'll get the next best thing. So um, get the homage to it. Um, but I ended up winning the actual book. So um, you'll see that in a very future uh, unboxing. So that's um, a really cool homage. Okay, next. Okay. Let's see if 
I can get this out. Okay, this is another L.B. Cole book. Uh, this is Shock number 20, uh, Shock Detective Cases number 20. And this is just um, somebody, I forget who was telling me, uh, somebody that watches my channel <laughs> said, hey, that the one of the books that was on my hot list, um, hot books of the week, um, he said, you know, there's a cover that's kind of similar that L.B. Cole did, um, you know, and he mentioned this book. I was like, oh, I'll check it out. And um, I picked this book up for really cheap, like a really great, great price. I think it was like 80 bucks. So I was like, oh, wow. And it's just a really great cover. You got this murderer and he's about to strangle this poor woman. And she's like just screaming. Um, so yeah, just a really great one. Uh, so this is, uh, again, another L.B. Cole cover. Okay. And this next one is um, Paragon uh, Illustrated number two. And um, this is the, I think this is the first appearance of Sin. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I want to say that. And hopefully I'm right. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it's another one of these Bill Black um, publications. Uh, where it has like a lot of good girl art inside. So what characters are mentioned? We got Captain Marvel Jr., Crimson Avenger, Buck Rogers, and Sinestra. Sinestria? Sin Nes uh, ah, I can never pronounce names. <laughs> okay, wait. Sinestesia. Sinestesia? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying my best, um, but just a really great uh, book uh, and just, uh, you know, classic good girl art. I actually, I'm going to actually open it up. I don't usually do this, but I figured, hey, why not? Why not open this up? Uh, uh, Got to do this quickly, though, because uh not much time, but okay, I'll take it out of that. Uh, they actually did a pretty good job of protecting it. Quite nice. See the art on the back. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm just going to check if it's, it's if it's okay to show to kids. <laughs> like, you know, I have to be careful showing what I show on my channel here. I'm just trying to remember who who's the first appearance. Give me a sec here. It even includes all the little um, Captain Marvel poster. It even includes like all the little flyers and stuff inside. So it's a complete book, which is nice. Imagine it's quite hard to find them in complete condition like this. really I'm trying to remember who the first appearance is <laughs> I think sin I'm pretty sure I but uh, yeah it's a really interesting book Synesthesia? Synesthesia? Uh, I, I'm trying to pronounce her name but she's abbreviated as sin <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's her first appearance yeah Okay, that's just really cool. Um, one sec here, I gotta put that back. Put that over there. Okay, still a few more books to show, and I gotta show them a little bit quicker. I gotta pick up the pace. Oh, okay, wow. Um, this is a really, really cool. So one of the channels that I watch on YouTube is called um, Casually Comics. And uh, the, she always does like s sort of showcases of comics. And she was talking about this particular book. Uh, this is Adventure Comics one, uh, 313. 
and it is the first appearance of Lady of uh, of Lady Satan. She's kind of like a she basically um, infects all the girls of um, the Justice League um, with like a virus that's going to kill them all. <laughs> and then she comes there and pretends to try to save everybody. Um, and so there's like, it's kind of a weird story. And it's like, basically at the end of the comic, it's revealed that, oh, she's, you know, she's always masked. But at the end, you they unmask her. And she's like a twin of a Supergirl. <laughs> It's just a really weird story, um, but uh, it's a character that kind of they reuse later on. Uh, I'm not sure why, <laughs> but uh, just a really interesting book. Um, so this is Adventure Comics number 313, first appearance of Satan Girl. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. And then we got uh, Authentic Police Cases number one. This is the Canadian edition you can see that so it's Canadian edition which came out roughly around the same time as the American edition maybe a little bit later um, but it is much rarer this is a Paul Parker cover as well and uh, just uh, just a really great you know bondage cover yeah that's why I picked it up um, I always like to get you know those uh, first first uh, issues as well uh, and that's um, you know, Authentic Police Cases had some really great covers as well. Okay, uh, this book is really great. Um, this next one is uh, Mad Comics number 49. And uh, the reason this is a great book is this is the first appearance of the Creature of the Black Lagoon in comics. So uh, this is where the Creature of the Black Lagoon made his first appearance. Uh, if you watch one of my earlier videos, I show another book with the Creature of the Black Lagoon. And I was like, oh, where did he make his first appearance? And it just turns out it was this book. So this is Creature of the Black Lagoon's first appearance in MAD, number 49 from September of 1959. So kind of a key book, totally under the radar. You can pick that book up for five bucks. It's really cheap, uh, actually. Um, speaking of first appearances... Uh, this is uh, one where it's the first appearance of uh, Sin City. This is Dark Horse Presents, a uh, fifth anniversary special. And it doesn't actually mention it. I'm going to show in a sec. Yeah. It's like Frank Miller, Sin City. So you got Sin City. In this. But this is the first appearance of Sin City in comics. <laughs> so... I accidentally bought, like, I bought the um, the set of Sin City comics. I thought, oh, that's, I got the first appearance of Sin City, but it turns out that this is the first appearance of Sin City. So I was like, oh, shoot, I gotta get this book. Um, so yeah, it even says right there, Sin City. So Dark Horse presents fifth anniversary special. First appearance of Sin City. And then we got... Oh, <laughs> this one's kind of... I, I'm, this one I actually just ordered, so it's kind of, this one came pretty quick. Um, okay, so this one is Marty Mouse number one from IW Comics. Now, IW is a kind of an interesting publisher. Basically, what they would do is they bought... All of the press, like, uh, you know, the, the plates and stuff, like when you want to pr print a comic, they brought all that art and all that stuff. Uh, they didn't buy the rights to it. They just bought the, the actual materials to make the comics. <laughs> and what they would do is they would publish, like, other people's stuff with their own covers. They would just republish other people's stuff. And... You know, a lot of the companies, they, they would do this after the Golden Age. So this was, you know, during the 60s. And basically they got away with it because a lot of those companies were out of business. <laughs> and, and they wouldn't weren't really around to sue them for copyright. So it's kind of funny that they did all that. Um, and all of their books, like every single book that they did was stolen. Stolen material, no copyright to it, except one book, this one. This is the only book where it's original material and, uh, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny. This is the only book that they did that is actually their own stuff. So uh, this is Marty Mouse number one 
And I don't even think there's a Marty Mouse number two. <laughs> so this is it. This is all they did. So I, I think it's kind of cool to get that kind of historical book. It's kind of a funny book. Um, but yeah, that's the only one that they did that was <laughs> their own stuff. So those IW uh, comics are actually really interesting, though. Uh, even though they are, as I said, they're ripping off uh, uh, other publishers, uh, they did kind of have some really cool covers. And you can find some cool... They, re they did redo the covers, and they did a really good job um, of doing the covers. Uh, one of the creators that was involved was Sol uh, Brodsky who later went on to make Skywolf Publishing. And this is just a, a, man, I didn't realize, it looks rougher than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it's like a little bit rough. This is The Great Ape, The Grape Ape, The Great Grape Ape. Wow, it's really hard to say. Um, and this is the first appearance of The Great Great Ape. <laughs> wow, that's a nice tongue twister. Um, so yeah. I just thought this was, I picked it up for cheap. I, you know, I just thought it was kind of cool to get, uh, like a kind of a first appearance character. I remember this character when I was a kid. So, um, so yeah, this is, I forget what this, when this is from, I think like 1960s or seventies, I believe it's no, 1970s because it's uh 30, 30 cents. This is from 1976. So kind of a fun book there. Okay, uh, we're kind of getting long for time. We'll, I'm going to try to show a few more books. I'll show just a few more. Just a few more. i got to show a bit more. Just a bit more. So just bear with me. There's going to be some great books. It's all worthwhile. Um, let's see if I can open this without slicing myself or the comments. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to show whatever's inside here. Oh, wow, okay. Ended with some fun stuff. This is a really great book. Um, somebody showed me this book. I think it was um, Joe from Black Box Silver and Bronze showed me this book. I was like, oh, wow, that's so me. <laughs> that's so me. Because um, it kind of mixes two things I like to collect in one book. Um, and I'll show you it. Once I get past all the tape, they put a ton of tape on this book. I don't know why. Okay, wow. Uh, lots of tape. Got past all the tape. And it is Whisper. And the reason I like this book is it's got that great uh, Peter Gribben, uh, uh, Peter Drizzen art. Dri uh, Dribben. I want to, I just love messing up people's names. Peter Dribben art. Um, and, but it's also an infinity cover. Isn't that awesome? So she's holding the magazine and now so forth and it's like the infinity cover so just a really great uh, good girl uh, men's magazine cover so i just i thought it was just really great so i i i like peter dribben's art and um this one just also is an infinity cover so i thought win-win like doubly cool so um this is from 1946 it's volume two number three really rare 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 books um, those dr Peter Dribben stuff goes for crazy money. Like, I, it, like usually anywhere from a hundred to two hundred dollar range uh, for those books. So pretty big money for um, that good girl art stuff. Like people like the good girl art. Okay, so that has been <laughs> part four of this massive unboxing. I hope you enjoyed. I, there were some pretty cool things mixed in. Um, again. Keep on watching because there's going to be even more stuff in the next videos that's going to be even more amazing. I, 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 just, I just have to keep on topping myself every video. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, watch the other parts as well. And um, bye for now.